Following extensive interlaboratory evaluation, the total starch method developed by Megazyme was adopted as an AOAC official method in 1996. AOAC method 996.11. This method has found widespread international use since that time. In 2018, this method was fully re-evaluated and found to give excellent results over a wide range of matrices and starch contents of 0.02% to 100%. In that study, two simpler formats were also introduced. The rapid total starch RTS format, which simplifies sample handling in the traditional AOAC method and the rapid total starch sodium hydroxide format, which offers an alternative to using DMSO for analysis of samples containing resistant starch. In this video, we are focusing on these two simplified formats. The total starch assay kit can be used to accurately measure the total starch content of essentially all sample types throughout industries such as cereals, food and animal feeds. The Association of American Feed Control Officials, AAFCO, have defined dietary starch to include starch and maltodextrins. And this is the definition we use here, except that we also include free glucose as this has the same dietary consequences. However, if required, free glucose can be determined separately on non-treated sample extracts as shown in this figure. This video tutorial will demonstrate the use of the kit in analyzing total starch in corn silage and in the control starch provided with the kit. The kit contains sufficient reagents for 100 manual assays and is supplied with a detailed data booklet. The principle of the RTS and RTS-NAOH total starch assay formats are shown here. In the RTS method, samples are suspended in sodium acetate buffer at 100 degrees Celsius and starch is solubilized and hydrolyzed to dextrins by thermostable alpha amylase. The sample tubes are cooled to 50 degrees Celsius and amyloglucosidase is added, hydrolyzing the starch dextrins to glucose. In the RTS sodium hydroxide procedure, resistant starch is first dissolved in sodium hydroxide solution. This solution is neutralized with acetate buffer and the starch is hydrolyzed to glucose under the combined action of thermostable alpha amylase and amyloglucosidase. Sample solutions are then diluted according to expected starch content and aliquots are analyzed for glucose using glucose oxidase peroxidase GOPOD reagent. The amount of deglucose measured is stoichiometric with the amount of starch in the sample. Prior to sample analysis, prepare the required additional reagents as described in the kit data booklet. When all of the additional reagents have been made, the kit components should be subsequently prepared ready for use. Use the contents of bottles 1, 2, 5 and 6 as supplied. Dilute the contents of bottle 3 GOPOD reagent buffer to 1 litre with distilled water. This is solution 3. This should be used immediately. Dissolve the contents of bottle 4 GOPOD reagent enzymes in approximately 20 ml of solution 3. Quantitatively transfer this to the bottle containing the rest of solution 3.
This is the glucose determination GoPod reagent, which is stable for approximately three months at two to five degrees Celsius. Store in a one liter Duran bottle covered in aluminum foil to protect from light. For longer term storage, divide into approximately 250 milliliter aliquots and store below minus 10 degrees Celsius. This is stable for greater than 12 months at temperatures below minus 10 degrees Celsius and should not undergo more than one freeze thaw cycle. Most samples are ground to pass a 0.5 mm screen using a mill similar to a fridge mill. For pasture and silage samples, grinding is more effectively achieved using a high-speed blender such as the Nutribullet. Accurately weigh approximately 100 mg of sample directly into a corning culture tube, 16 by 120 mm. Gently tap the tube to ensure all of the sample falls to the bottom and record the exact weight. In this demonstration, we are using a corn silage sample and the provided kit control in duplicate together with associated sample blanks. Add 10 milliliters of 100 millimolar sodium acetate buffer, pH 5, containing 5 millimolar calcium chloride to all tubes and stir vigorously on a vortex mixer. For samples like corn silage, manipulate all the sample back into the bottom of the tube as shown on the vortex. To the sample tubes, add 0.1 milliliters of thermostable alpha amylase. Add 0.1 milliliters of 100 millimolar sodium acetate buffer to the blank tubes. Loosely cap the tubes and mix the contents on a vortex mixer. Incubate the tubes in a boiling water bath, approximately 100 degrees Celsius. After two minutes, tighten the caps. After a further five and 10 minutes, vortex the tubes again for five seconds and return to the boiling water bath. After 15 minutes, remove the tubes from the boiling water bath. Mix vigorously for five seconds on a vortex and cool the tubes to 50 degrees Celsius in a water bath over five minutes. Uncap the tubes and add 0.1 milliliters of amyloglucosidase solution to the sample tubes. Add 0.1 milliliters of 100 millimolar sodium acetate buffer to the blank tubes. Vortex the tubes for three seconds. And incubate the tubes at 50 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes with no further mixing. After 30 minutes incubation, remove the tubes and allow to cool. Once cool, ensure that the tubes are capped tightly and then mix the contents thoroughly by inversion of the tubes. Transfer two milliliters of the prepared samples and blanks into two milliliter microfuse tubes.
and centrifuge the tubes at 13,000 RPM for five minutes. Using a micro pipetter such as a Gilson Pipetman dispenser, accurately transfer one milliliter of each solution to either four milliliters or 10 milliliters of 100 millimolar sodium acetate buffer, pH 5, depending on the approximate starch content of the sample. For corn silage samples, transfer the one milliliter to four milliliters of acetate buffer. For the kit control, transfer the one milliliter aliquot to 10 milliliters of acetate buffer. The sample specific blanks require no dilution. Mix the solutions well. These solutions are now ready for glucose determination. Transfer 0.1 milliliter aliquots of the sample and blank solutions to duplicate 16 by 100 millimeter tubes. Prepare the glucose standard tubes in quadruplicate by adding 0.1 milliliters of glucose standard, bottle 5 to 4 tubes. Prepare the reagent blanks in duplicate by adding 0.1 milliliter of 100 millimolar sodium acetate buffer, pH 5, to 2 tubes. Add 3 milliliters of GoPod reagent to all tubes and incubate the tubes for 20 minutes at 50 degrees Celsius. After the 20 minute incubation, measure the absorbance at 510 nanometers against a reagent blank. Use the absorbances to calculate the content of starch. Accurately weigh approximately 100 mg of sample directly into a corning culture tube exactly as described for the RTS method. Gently tap the tube to ensure all of the sample falls to the bottom. Add 0.2 ml of 80% volume per volume aqueous ethanol to each sample tube and stir the tube contents on a vortex mixer to obtain maximum wetting of the sample. This assists easy dissolution of starch in high starch samples. Add a magnetic stirrer bar and two milliliters of ice cold 1.7 molar sodium hydroxide solution to each tube. and stir the tube contents in an ice water bath over a magnetic stirrer for 15 minutes. During this time, intermittently stir the tube contents on a vortex mixer for five to 10 seconds to ensure all lumps of material are removed. Add eight milliliters of 600 millimolar sodium acetate buffer pH 3.8 and mix the tube contents thoroughly on a vortex mixer. Ensure the pH is approximately 5. Immediately add 0.1 milliliters of thermostable alpha amylase and 0.1 milliliters of amyloglucosidase to the sample tubes. Add 0.2 milliliters of 100 millimolar sodium acetate buffer, pH 5, to the blank tubes. Tightly cap all tubes, mix the contents on a vortex mixer and incubate the tubes at 50 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes. 
After 30 minutes, remove the tubes and allow to cool to room temperature. Ensure the tubes are capped tightly and mix the contents by inversion. Samples of all solutions are clarified by centrifugation as described for the RTS method and then diluted as described with the removal of aliquots for glucose determination. The absorbance readings of the sample and the blank reactions are used to calculate the starch content on an as-is or dry weight basis in the test samples. When performing this test on the Megaquant Wave Spectrophotometer, the absorbance mode feature must be used. The results will be printed via the onboard printer or the data can be exported to a computer using the SF Capture software. Please see your Megaquant Wave video for further details. In absorbance mode, the results output are raw absorbance values for glucose standard and samples. Therefore, the calculations of total starch content can be performed manually as described in the calculation section of the kit booklet. Megazyme has also developed specific Excel-based Megacalc applications for each Megazyme kit to allow quick and easy results analysis. Results can be analyzed using the MegaCalc application specific to this total starch assay kit, which is available to download free of charge from the Megazyme website. Results can be calculated on an as-is basis or moisture content of the sample can be allowed for to give results on a dry weight basis. The MegaCalc spreadsheet provides full instructions for use. Open the MegaCalc worksheet and input the following. Sample details. Absorbance readings for the D-glucose standards. For each sample, input the sample identifier. For each sample, input the sample weight used. Alter the extract volume if a volume other than the default 10.2 milliliters has been used. If using the RTS NaOH method, your extract volume will be 10.4 milliliters. For each sample, input the absorbance values recorded in duplicate. Alter the sample volume if a volume other than the default 0.1 milliliters is used. If dilution of the sample has been performed prior to the GoPod assay, then input the dilution factor used. If no further dilution was performed, the dilution factor is 1. When all of the data has been entered, the percentage of total starch in the sample is automatically calculated and given as grams per 100 gram on an as-is basis. If the moisture content of the sample is known, input the moisture content percentage. When this additional data is entered, the concentration of total starch is automatically calculated and given as grams per 100 gram on a dry weight basis. Fibrous and heterogeneous samples such as pasture, grasses and silage are hard to grind through a conventional fritch type mill. Consequently, we recommend the use of a Nutri-Bullet blender. The recovered ground samples are slightly more heterogeneous than materials processed through a fritch mill, so we also recommend analysis of a larger sample size. The starch values obtained for samples of silage of approximately 500 mg and analysed according to the RTS format are shown here. The incubation conditions of the RTS method were followed, with the exception that the times of incubation with thermostable alpha amylase and amyloglucosidase were varied. As can be seen, the optimal conditions to obtain complete hydrolysis of the starch are incubation with thermostable alpha amylase for 60 minutes at 100 degrees Celsius followed by incubation with amyloglucosidase for 30 minutes at 50 degrees Celsius. If sample sizes greater than 500 mg are analysed, the analyst will be required to optimise the incubation conditions themselves. 